Welcome back to Investing Tips. There are rumours that Apple is actually working on the M1X chip shortly after their M1 chip release. Should we wait for the M1X chip or is M1 going to be the best chip? Is Apple's stock value affected from this leak? Watch this video to get all of the answers. In this video, we will talk through all we know about the next year's Apple M1X chip, new MacBooks, iPad Pro and the new Apple Watch. Before we kick things off with the M1X chip, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more content just like this one. But back to business. This reliable leak we speak of has said that the new M1X chip do for release next year will have 12 cores in total. That's eight performance cores and four high efficiency cores. Now compare that to the four and four in the current M1 lineup, that's four more performance cores in this new processor. The tweet claims it'll be coming first in the new 16 inch MacBook Pro lineup and this will be revealed officially in the form of a good old fashioned press release rather than part of an event. And whilst I've been calling it the M1X chip, that name isn't officially final, but for now we'll go with it. This this is super exciting. It will be a monster chip compared to the M1. Makes sense since it will be for a higher tier 16 inch machine. But this whole press release thing doesn't make sense to me. The very first M1X chip, you'd expect an Apple event to be the perfect environment to release and showcase its new qualities. Now, according to renowned analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, we should be expecting more Apple releases. Now, he's projecting an additional M1 MacBook towards the end of 2021 with an all new design. Putting two and two together, we think that this all new design is referencing the rumoured 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros. But what we don't know is if we can expect to see the highly anticipated mini LED displays or even 5G in the next generation. But those are being talked about in the world of rumours. Now let's talk about the touch bar, but what's the point? It felt like it was just there because they can, but according to recent revealed patent application, force touch sensors could be added to a future MacBook Pro Touch Bar. At the moment, Force Touch and even 3D Touch have been kind of removed from all Apple products, so it'd be surprising to see them go with this in the future. Force Touch allows you to add extra pressure on the display through your finger and would trigger a haptic feedback and offer additional options depending on what you're pressing, but it never caught on with iPhones or Apple Watches, so what's the point unless they've really made some huge improvements? And think about it, these features won't hurt the batteries as much as they have in the past because the new M1X chips would mean that it wouldn't affect the battery nearly as much. Now let's talk watches. They had their force touch before and it had been removed. Moving on, Quo has already said that 2021 Apple Watch will undergo a bit of a makeover too. We can see redesign and an increase of screen size, although we don't know which models will be affected or what size they will be. Thinking about it, it makes much more sense for the Series 7 to undergo this facelift, then Apple can keep the 6 and the SE at an even lower price. iPad Pro the iPad Pro did undergo some changes this year. In 2020, they added an ultra-wide camera, a light sensor, and one more enabled GPU core. Now, these changes weren't exactly drastic and didn't entice people to upgrade their iPads. But from what we're hearing, that could all change next year. There are claims out there now that at least one of the new iPad Pro models set for release at the beginning of 2021 will come with at least one mini LED display. But then the report gets even more more interesting. It says that later in 2021, Apple plans on releasing the new iPad models with OLED displays. It talks about how both Samsung and LG are already working on their OLED displays, and it doesn't hugely make sense unless they're working on something otherworldly. So these long-standing rumors have been addressed by Ross Young. He's a display analyst whose attentions have been on Apple for a while. And the idea of OLED displays, he was quick to shut down these claims. It's just a clear no from him. So we're expecting a 12.9 inch iPad Pro with a mini LED display and possibly an 11 inch too, but that's not all iPad wise. DigiTimes has reported that Apple have been able to successfully develop its own in-house millimetre wave antenna in package for next year's iPhone lineup. Now that means there's a bigger chance that we could see that antenna and 5G connectivity coming to the iPad Pros too. There are two flavours of 5G connectivity as we know. Sub 6 GHz is one of them. It's the one with the slightly lower speed but wider spread so it covers suburban and rural areas. Again, it's not as fast as millimetre wave. 
millimetre wave is in denser and urban areas covering shorter distances but has ultra fast speeds if you're closer to a tower. Also, many people are still having fun with the iOS 14, but the verifier site in Israel have reported that Apple will drop support for the iPhone SE, iPhone 6S and iPhone 6S Plus in the new iOS 15. But people, please bear in mind that these are the same guys who said that we can expect Touch ID in the Apple Watch 6 series and that's never happened. Although this claim does seem more realistic than that one. This means that iOS 15 supports the iPhone SE 2020 edition, the iPod Touch 7 generation, the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus and higher, which is no bad thing. Again, if this information shed some light on your expectations where Apple stock can go in the next year, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel.